Hey guys, thanks for purchasing um, the Serpatag um, Google Business a Profile um, tool. And if you bought any of the upsells, you've got some fantastic tools there. Now, I'm just going to give you a brief walk around this um, desktop tool. We're just before launch, and I've just realized that I hadn't done this video yet. So I'm going to cover the basics, but we will get into more details about strategy and stuff in some webinars. Okay, the first webinar is coming up in just a few days, and you can see the link for that inside the download page where the tutorials also are as well. Okay, now, first thing you want to be aware of is that we need to have proxies, okay? So you put in proxies in here. Now, I'll put a link in for squid proxies. Um, the best way to get a hold of squid proxies is if you go over to Black Hat World and they have a thread there. Um, squid proxies have a thread there and I think they give 25% discount. I use squid proxies for most of this sort of generic views stuff like YouTube views etc but since this is for um, the GMB stuff there's another, another couple of sources that we can get um, I will put the links underneath this video so that you can get geo targeted um, proxies okay so it's important if you want to do um, local sort of views from around the proximity of wherever the GMB page is or wherever the local business is based. Okay, so I'll put those links underneath now. Also, if you come over to the settings over here and you come into the SERP attack settings here, you will see that you need to put the username and password for the, the web app. Um, so you create your own account in the web app, you add um, your license for the web application inside the web app okay whatever username and password you created here you're going to put it in here okay now you have two licenses with separate one for the desktop tool one for the web app the two different licenses they come in two separate emails if you've only got one license please check your emails and you should see uh, another email with a license for desktop tool and one for a license for the web application okay you need both of those and then you're going to come in here and put the username and password that you created when you created your um, separate web application um, registration okay now here you will see the number of threads now this is really important here if you go over the amount of threads that your computer can handle it's going to be problematic it's going to crash um, the software it might even sort of freeze your, your computer for um, and, until you can get rid of it. What I normally do is I keep um, down here um, in my taskbar access to the task manager. Sometimes I forget and I've got like four and four and that is too much for this particular computer. So what you want to do is read here it will tell you how much resources this is going to take up. Now this is a Windows only um, tool so if you don't have windows you can use um, a, a, a VP a VPS a, a private server um, with windows on it and uh, where you can install uh, windows tools I should say um, but what you want to do here is you don't want to go over usually about four threads now here's the best way to use it this sounds counterintuitive but it's really really not and I'll explain why what you want to do is you want to make the group projects this is where you're doing views for other people. You want to make that up to three. Um, if you've got a powerful computer, you can try four. And for your personal projects, make it one. Why? Because you don't want to use all of your IPs on your own projects before the projects um, get picked up by other people. Okay, so people are putting on the desktop tools at different times. I try to keep mine on some spare computers running all the time. All I have to do then is check the proxies are still active and refresh the proxies, etc. if I need. But here's the thing. If I've got um, 200 viewers that I'm going to run and I'm only doing from my, from my, my desktop tool one um, thread for my own, then my proxies don't get used up on my, my project so quickly. And it forces other people to do the views from their IPs. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you do more uh, with the group projects, then that will happen with you as well. So if you do three group projects, plus you own just one, it forces other people's IPs to view your video campaigns or whatever it might be. Okay, so this is really powerful stuff um, if you can get other people's IPs doing the views for you, okay? Um, other things that you can do in here, um, you can use a VPN settings, I do not use it. To be honest, not with this tool. We had this from the old VidaTag Alpha. Um, VidaTag Alpha is still there, but 
the VPN settings, I wouldn't use it for this, it's just this one is too powerful, but it's there if you really, really need. Um, you can put in some indexes as well, you need to put in the API keys. Capture solvers, you, you will find in here that you've got a, a choice of three or four. Um, Death pie capture is good, I use two capture, I never have any problems, and that works pretty well. Okay, and the general tab up here, well you just want to have these two checkboxes, and that means when you restart your computer, then you, you the software will start up, okay? Now, very, very, very important, okay? You can see over here these two buttons. Do not use these yet, okay? <clears throat> the home IP, do not use it yet. Just wait until we have enough members. I'm hoping with this launch, we're gonna have enough members that we can turn this on. And this is good if you've got universal credits and you wanna do YouTube views because we will be able to do a lot on YouTube from a home IP logged into YouTube as well, which is really powerful, really important. But we will cover that in a webinar, probably in a couple of weeks, okay? For now, just stick with the IPs for now until we build this membership up. I'm gonna be doing another launch for another separate act tool in two weeks for the YouTube Shorts. So we will get more members come in from that as well. So we should be able to use this quite soon when we've got the membership up. And that's why I've been selling it so cheap. That's why I've been selling it for just 37 bucks on the first day of the launch to get as many people in as possible so that we can start to move towards using Home IP for certain projects. Not all of the projects it's gonna be suitable for, but for certain projects like YouTube CTR and stuff like that, it is very, very important, okay? So we wanna get there. Now, if you see that you are <clears throat> not getting your browser pop-up, if you've got your browser visible um, in the settings for the campaigns within the web app and it's not popping up, chances are you maybe have a problem with proxies. Make sure these two are on, these two need to be on. Um, before you do anything else, check these two. You need to schedule tasks enabled to kick off the campaigns. If it's not enabled, it needs to be enabled. And as soon as you um, make this green, then you will see the campaign start. Sometimes you have a problem with um, antivirus software. What I normally do is when I'm installing the software, I turn off the antivirus until it's installed and I can turn it back on again. Um, sometimes you will see it quarantines. I use, um, the Avast uh, antivirus and all I need to do is go in my taskbar and basically I can open it up and when I open it up I can be able to um, go to the quarantine folder and restore from there. If you have any problems with it you can contact support but those are the most common issues um, that we get okay. Um, we have a rank checker there if you want to check as well but it's just as quick honestly to go into YouTube and, and check there. At some point we will make a better version of this, in fact we have a better version of this. We'll probably add that over the next few days where we have a triple rank checker for Yahoo for being in Yahoo and, and Google and we will add that in here at some point over the next few days. Okay so I'm um, coming back into the home screen here you can see how this is working. I'm doing views for someone else, someone else is doing views for me on their desktop um, computer as well. And plus I'm doing one for myself in here as well. And you can see everything is working perfectly, okay? So that's basically all you need to know about the desktop tool. It's very easy, there's nothing complicated. Um, it, it, it's not hard at all. The YouTube accounts, you will not need these yet until we are ready to use the home IP stuff. I will do additional training on that at the time we will go through step by step how to set this up. But just leave these for now, okay? The home IP and the YouTube accounts, leave it for now um, just for a week or two weeks and hopefully we can get started with the home IP stuff and we can take things to another level for the YouTube SEO stuff. If you have got universal credits, you can use the YouTube SEO tools. If you haven't, I suggest you get them during the launch because we've got a lot of tools coming as well. We've got YouTube Shorts tools, we've got YouTube CTR tools, and we've got, we're gonna be adding more TikTok, um, Yahoo, local, Bing uh, local, um, a few more. Um, that you really want to take advantage of and those universal credits will allow you to use for any kind of campaigns that you want, okay? Um, that's it, that's all you really need to know. Um, important to keep in mind that when it comes to the SEP attack settings, if you put your personal projects to just one thread, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it forces other people to do those campaign views for you, okay? With their IPs. So if you've got 
25 squid IPs, for example, and you're in a group with 10 people, then that's equivalent to having 250 squid IPs. Now, if you're only doing one view and you've got those other nine people there, they are forced to do the views from their IPs for you and vice versa. That's a very important part, um, a part of this, and that means you've got more safety in numbers with these different IPs. Okay, that's it. If you've got any more questions, feel free to write into support. Do join the Skype group as well. There's a Skype group there. There's some very, very good people in the Skype group. I'm happy to help you as well, happy to advise you, and I will pop in there very often as well. We're usually in there daily, um, so you can see me in there as well. And if you've got any questions, ask them within the group, and there will be someone happy to answer you. Thank you.